I swear, every time, every time I load up Dead by Daylight, the properties for the microphone go kaput. With that being said, hey, what is up, guys? It's Guild Spire here, and welcome back to Dead by Daylight. Hey, I'll do one on this terrific Tuesday afternoon. Hopefully, y'all are doing well. I know I am. With that being said, we are going to be jumping right on into chapter 27 with the Skull Merchant themselves. Was tempted to uh, to play some Survivor today, opted to go with Skull Merchant instead. Gonna try out a few builds. This is the build from the PTB that I used. And honestly, in my opinion, one of the better build options. Colobrine, Scourge of Gift of Pain, Brutal Strength, and of course the old trusty Corruptor Invention. Um, realistically speaking, it's probably not the best build for Skull Merchant, but Colobrine, in my opinion, is a absolute must. I think the next thing that you do, maybe, is Overcharge. If you're doubling up uh, stacks of Regression, I would say Corrupt Invention, Colobrine, Overcharge. Uh, Brutal Strength, I think, because they are an M1115 killer, is a little bit of a must, in my opinion. But that is just my own personal opinion. With that being said, some little buffs and tweaks here from the PTB. Nothing really to write home for, um, about, though they did decrease the time, uh, or actually eliminate the time for you to send out more drones, which is a nice feature. Um, as well as increase the battery of the claw trap. So, uh, overcharge the add-on is not, nece uh, not a necessity, but it's still a welcome 12% additional. Uh, and with my playstyle using the ultrasonic speaker, I think it's a go-to. With that being said, though, we are going to be jumping right on into this first match. All right, all right. And a hot minute I've actually played uh, Killer. I think the last time actually was the PTB, funny enough. So I'll have to see how this works out in our favor. That is, if we load in, and we are going to Rancid. Okay. So, let's take a look. Let's see where Corrupt Invention hit. We have one over here. So, I guess we'll rotate over to the right. Deploy first drone. Sounds like they're over here. Multiple survivors. Potentially three, in fact. We'll take that. So, I saw one go to the right. They may not know that I know they're here. Looks like they may have gone further back into the tile, in fact, though. Let's kick this. Let's toss up a drone. Go on a chase. See what we can get. Getting that uh, early pallet is pretty good for us, though. A little bit of mind gaming. And I think we get the hit here on the T-Wall. A fake out from the survivor. Good job there. Let's force him off this tile. First hit in. And some nice noise notifications. We see that Ash now has a device on them. See if that faked them out. It did not. Keep in mind, much like Legion, we just run out of our power here. Ah! Yep, I know about that trick, friend. Don't even think about it. All right, Scourge Hooks, Scourge Hooks, where are you? Probably not close enough, to be honest, but we'll try and go for it. Get some slowdown of Gift of Pain. Now, they were over there. This is on the Meg, toss up her drone. So they have gotten one. I do want to recall this one. Scratch marks over here. That is 
Michaela. For, I mean, no reason not to. See one right here on the gen. Call it Brian going off. Neg taking a hit. Toss up another drone. Yeah, we'll break. No reason not to. Looks like they have some sprint burst in hand. Honestly, you may have been able to get the swing there, given it was a mid vault. They could have had head on there, seemed a bit odd. That seemed really odd to me that they sprinted as quickly as they did and then still had dead hard. I want to force them into this back corner, me thinks. All right, we see the ashes over here. My friend. You're in a bit of trouble, I do feel. You don't make that in time. And looks like someone may have taken down the drone over there. Let's put you here. We'll get our drone back. Let's kick. Leave the drone. Batteries there. Mm, looks like enemies necessary is in play. And back to the hook. We love that. Force them to leave the LT. Honestly, good on you, but you'll take the hit. And now we can get a free break from a pallet, and they may not even realize that's going to happen. I'm going to play the L wall. Sorry, this is the T wall. There's the dead hard. Wanted to wait that out a bit. Didn't get the value we wanted, but it worked out nonetheless. Okay, where is a hook? Looks like there's one over here. I was waiting for a scourge hook nearby, but no dice. Yo, what's up, giraffe? How you doing today? Let's recall you. Go over to this gen. Yeah, some decent work here. And yeah, they finished that one. <laughs> You're salty? Why is that? up. Take a look at Jens over here. There's the unhook. Camp tunneled and slugged by a dredge. Well, that is just a wee bit miserable. Check this gen next. And before that, a tunneling merchant too. Yeesh. And then he body blocked the door at the end for you. Triple yeesh. All right, so we see you. Hi. I'm going to go for Michaela. Don't want to be accused of tunneling. Oh, this is actually huge. I don't know why they do this, because I think they're in a pretty bad position, all things considered. They also have a battery on them, which is fantastic for me. Because if they go for a vault at a pallet, they'll break it. And I believe they have a dead heart. Another gen done. May have heard footsteps there. Yeah, you're too close, friend. And you're on death hook as well, so I'll definitely go for you. All right, looks like someone has grabbed the drone. Yep, that's Ash. Perfect. What's the plan here, friend? We're gonna get Bloodlust 2 here. Uh. 
Good stun. Also, you don't care all too much about that. I'm actually going to drop Chase here, knowing that Ash is here instead. Let's kick. Throw this up. Go for the Megan. I'm actually going to hit Meg. I'm going to go... Why would she go back in there? That's so odd. I'm going to go for the Ash. Who's over here? Uh huh. I think not. Let's go for Ashy Boy. And he still has his battery on him, so I want him to break it. A boon here. Good to know. He's gonna take the body block. I'm fine with this. No pallets up ahead, though. No life. Do you have Dead Hard Friend? He's Dead Hard Revolting. Yeah, she'd have to have the perfect angle right there. Let's kick this. And I don't think I can put my drone down there. Nope. Let's get you to leave the tile. It also reactivates their battery, which is pretty huge for me. They reactivate that drone as well. And I don't know what your plan was, but it ain't gonna work out well. Alright. Let's put you on a scourge hook. We'll get our drone back here. Let's reclaim this one. Let's reactivate that one. There's Ash right there. Yeah. I was really confused to what they were doing because they waited such a long time. I was thinking that they had more progression than they did. Mm, he dropped out of the. Coming back here. Yep, he's going to interact with the drone. We'll toss up another drone. Hi, Ash me boy, it's time for you. Meg seems to be now interacting with the drone back there. You might have to hit and run. That's fine, let's get you to vault it. Thank you, Ash. Appreciate it. Now we're going to go for Megan, who's on the Call of Brian gen. And also ability to be insta-downed. That's Michaela and Thalita. So I'm not sure Meg is, though. So they must have left a bit early. You're on death hook though, so I'd be surprised if your teammates come in for body blocks. <laughs> a dead heart. All right, let's get you up on the hook. Doesn't need to be a scourge hook because you're dead. Um, other gens that had progress, can't really say. Though, did that drone just go away? It did. So that must have been Ash. You just took that, as they now have a fresh battery and claw trap. Yep, sure enough, there's the ash. Let's toss this back up. And let's go over to this gen. I'm afraid that's two survivors on it. And sure enough, I see one, but not the other. Not sure where Meg is. All right. Ash is back over here, it would seem. Hi there, Ashy boy. Mm, looks like he went over this way.
little bit of a fake. They gain a bit of distance. I mean, this is fine. Call up Ryan going off, two survivors on it, however, might need to interrupt that real quick. I do want to note that we also have another... What is going on over here? still up. Looks like one of them is gaining progression. You have nothing here, friend. So now they all have claw traps. Let's go over to you. Hey, GG's, my friend. GG's. I appreciate you stopping by saying hi. I am Mark, aka Guildspire. I'm an educational streamer. who teach killers how to play killer and survivors how to play against killer. Very happy to have you here. All right, let's re-enable you. Let's go over to the Call of Brian Gen. As though we haven't got any notifications, I got a strange feeling that there is an ash here. His battery is slowly degrading. Yeah. Close. Let's make him leave the loop. Okay. I don't know if you understand. Can I put down a one right here? Ah, I was hoping that maybe I could. Cute though. Hmm. That's one really awkward thing about the drone, honestly. Going to the D wall. Do you have dead heart? No. You do not. Um, forget what state you're on, but one of you is definitely on death hook. I guess that one would be you. Alright, that leaves Meg and Michaela. Let's. Oh, I can't kick because. Right. Well, let's re enable you. I guess Call of Brian will be enough information for now. And I mean, this is going to pretty much be a guaranteed 3k, all things considered. That feels like bait if I've ever seen it, though. So we're going to ignore them. Yep, yeah, that, that, was, that was what we call bait. Pause up the drone. Yep, Michaela was there after all. Good dead hard for what it's worth. However, we know that Michaela's nearby. Scratch marks going out here. Is that boon still up, I wonder? Well, I guess if she brings me over to that gen, I can throw a drone up there as well. Gotta leave the LT wall. We have the drone to spare. Yeah. And not going into main. Oh, you should have thrown that. Yeah. That should have been a throw for sure. All right, I want to say it's Michaela who is not on death hook. I mean, honestly, Colibrian just seems like such a staple for this killer. I don't think there's ever a situation where I would not bring Call of Brian for her. I think I mentioned this during the PTB and I'll mention it again. It just seems like such a no-brainer. Um, same idea with the knight as well. Knight as well. Try out some drones, get some more deviousness. As far as where the hatch is, no clue. But they definitely aren't escaping via the Exegates today. Ah, there we go. 
But GG well played to these survivors. All right, let's also see if stars, if you are alive, always here to support other Dead by Daylight content creators. So always like to see if that is the case. Stars, Z's, uh, TTV, two stars Z's. Looks like you are not. All right. All right, well, on to the next one. Should probably, probably chosen a challenge, but oh well. Not too hard pressed. Let's see. Current tome. I really haven't touched the tome at all. Uh, yeah, we'll chase survivors. So obviously we have this build. This is, you know, my style of build. Corrupt Intervention, one gen slowdown, one gen uh, regression, and then of course our utility perk. There are some other really cheeky ways to use the Skull Merchant's power though. So I'm thinking going a bit more deviousness and going with some uh, hex totems instead. So it'd be Corrupt Intervention, and then we go Hexes Galore. So we can go Devo, we can go Grill the Hunt Undying. This is a really, really nasty build in my opinion, because all you do is you set up your drones next to Lit Totems and prosper. Uh, so we really do want to focus in on when they are inside of our drone's radius, though. Uh, causes it to gain? No. When entering a drone? No. Uh, the enter drones have their auras revealed. I mean, that might not be a bad idea, the advanced movement prediction. We have a claw trap. While well, interactive drone gain 2% haste. Uh, serve from hindered. So, uh, drone signs don't serve from the oblivious status effect. There we go. That is what we want. We Honestly, the brown noise generator is probably one of the better add-ons. But this should pretty much guarantee us Devo. Because the goal here is Devo 5 stacks. So, survivors entering drones active zone had their ores revealed. Survivors in the field are oblivious. Um, anything else? I'm trying to think here. We had someone in the PTB use the same type of build, and it was, uh, it was quite difficult to manage. It was on RPD too. To be fair, I had realized that was probably a Devo, but didn't really do much about it as uh, Thrill of the Hunt was up. Uh, Sorizen Jones are exhausted. Uh, nope. Speed at which lock on builds inside the drone zone. Uh, Link duration of undetectable. Drone's active mode. I have no skill check warning. Unhackable state duration of drones by 10%. Yeah, I'd say honestly these two probably make the most sense for what we're trying to do, which is get five stacks of Devo. We go to our totems. Realistically speaking, we only need to go to two of them in the grand scheme of things, I suppose. Um, but three to be safe, we throw up our drones, we'll have one left over for chases, the push them off of tiles. Um, honestly, it's gonna be really interesting. I, as soon as someone steps into a drone's active zone, uh, either they have to grab the claw trap, deactivate the drone, which then tells you to go immediately over there, or they take the risky play which is try and cleanse the totem inside of the drone zone. Either ways, we'll know exactly where they are and they'll be oblivious to boot. So that is what we're going to do. I imagine actually a lot of uh, Skull Merchants will try out this play style, whether or not it works yet to be seen. 
Um, I also wonder if there is any thought to using uh, the knight's totem, uh, making it so that survivors scream. I, it'd be cute, but it might mess up the synergies. Dead Dog Saloon. Okay, okay. But not meant I've been here. So we see one there, two there, and three there. Uh, Corrupt Invention. They could have spawned across that entire zone, unfortunately. So let's make sure that we do grab these. And if we can also encapsulate a. I don't. Uh, encapsulate an area on top of which that would be amazing. Ah! All right, and we're gonna make it difficult for them to get this drone. Can we see them over there? There's a Dweet Boy. We love to see a Dweet Boy. And you don't have much in the way of pallet here, so unless you have Dead Hard, you are in fact dead. <laughs> Let's swing out, just in case. Never be too careful. We see Michaela working on a drone. They realized what was happening there. They have to make a choice and they leave it instead. Alright, Bill Boy, you left a little bit early. And a pout there too, just not to use it. One stack of Devo up. Let's go for Bill now. You have a tile coming up, but I don't know if you get there in time, friendo. Well, the hunt's gonna be active soon. So none of them are actually in that area. We see one person on the totem. They're oblivious to boot. Perfect. Works as intended. Up you go, Dwighty boy. Gen completed. Another token of Devo. I mean, yeah, honestly, this is another option for a build for uh, the Skull Merchant that is honestly just absurd. Go back over here. We get a haste ass effect. Let's reactivate you. And we got our last stack of Devo reactivated. They should see us. Yeah, giving them the obliviousness too is just fantastic. Up you go there, Dwighty boy. And not my fault that Dwight has wanted to go for those totems as often as they have. Miss a skill check. Well, the hunt no longer gives you info on uh, when they touch a gen, so I was kind of curious, like, what is that noise notification just got? Let's reactivate this one. We actually see the aura of a survivor, so that must be object of obsession. That's an interesting choice of perk here. Fourth stack. Mm. 
object should pop off soon unless. Hmm. No, I'm not certain where they went. Oh, let's hit this gem real quick. And you guys have to do something, do something quick. Because otherwise, I will get my fist stack Devo here. Ah! Looks like keeping the active drones up and active is something that you kind of have to pay attention to. Make sure they don't uh, deactivate. Another one there, but it is within uh, line of sight of the totem. All right. Honestly, I think we just wait for the unhook, right? No reason not to. Yep, and we just kill you. I don't think we poked you even a single time on top of which. <sighs> it's so unfortunate that the Mori is as boring as it is. It really is unfortunate. Looks like they're on the totem. Yep, hello friend! Let's kill you. <laughs> I like how I just walk through the freaking railing at an elevated surface. And just think about the the undetectable uh, smoke showing up like that. All right, well, let's go see if we can either find Bill or find the hatch. Oh, there's Billiam. Hi, friend. Okay, that was a choice, and we swing for it. No reason not to. <clears throat> and with that being said, GG, well played to these survivors. Yeah, honestly, the best thing that you can do is you need to attack multiple totems at the same time um, because honestly if you don't that is what's going to happen it, it is a nightmare scenario if the skull merchant has this build and you are not in a coordinated team because let's say they use the exact same build Devo uh, Undying and Thrill Basically, you need to find the locations of all three totems and jump on all three totems at the same time. No matter what, they cannot interrupt them all. And so chances are, at that point, the first one that goes off is always going to be the Undying. The second one is going to either be the Thrill or the Devo. You just need to hope that's the Devo. And if that's the case, you're golden. So it's it's a really interesting build. It's crazy just knowing whenever Sprite uh, is going for Tom. Yeah, this build is kind of nuts. Needs a team to jump on all three totems at the same time. And it, at the end of the day, like you can't unless the totems are right next to each other. Which to be fair, my total layout was kind of nuts because I had two right next to one another. Unless that happens. Um, yeah, you need three survivors to jump on all of them because the Skull Merchant at that point then has to make a choice. Okay, which one do I go for? Right? Yes, and as early quick as possible. Yup. Sometimes the build makes the killer. Good luck out for the next match. So, I don't know. I, I mean, fact matter is, I don't think people understood what the skull merchant was possible of in the ptb 
Um, I think that this is one of those scenarios, which to be fair, I'm not the biggest fan of, where the build makes the killer, right? We, we've seen similar scenarios in the past of where that is the case. I think that it is so, so clear on the Skull Merchant that that is the case. The build makes the killer, where you either are protecting gens, which are kicked with high gen regression, colorblind, overcharge, etc. Or you protect totems and you go for undying, thrill the hunt, devo. So it is really interesting to see uh, how this works. I mean, so theoretically speaking, let's let's think about this for a second. Is there ever a scenario where you could run just Devo Thrill, ignore Undyne? Just prevent protect two totems. Yeah, but would that be beneficial, I guess the question. I guess realistically speaking, oh man, yeah, if you can't get the totems, you just hope that your chases are long enough, right? And having the advanced movement prediction and the brown noise generator are just kind of nutty. You know that they're on the totem, and they do not know that you are coming to the totem to interrupt. So you can either get a grab or just chase them off. It's it's really strong. Um, If I amend this build real quick, and let's go with the strongest iteration of it, in my opinion. Uh, I'm thinking Colobrine is a must. I'm thinking Overcharge just makes too much sense. Um, let's see. Colobrine, Overcharge. I don't think there's anything else that increases the gen regression speed of something. And if I'm reminding myself about your perks. I guess you could do gen slowdown. Damage generating breaking walls or pallets gives you a 5% haste status. Yeah. I think this is probably like the best or one of the best builds on them if you're going with a gen protection. Uh, if you're going for gen protection, colorblind overcharge, it's a lethal combo. There's not much you can do about it. If you're going for totems, this is probably the best build that you can have on them. Um, is there anything else that you can really do? Try to think. Realistically speaking, those are two major objectives. They're forced to do gens, so you protect the gens. You force them to do totems, which takes them off of gens. Keep that in mind as well. One of the insane parts about build number two is the fact that this requires three survivors at a minimum to be off of gens. And for them to find those three totem totems in the first place. Like, unless their chases are great. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's trouble. It's trouble. Like, maybe the other solution, other than have three survivors jump on all three totems at the same time, would be for one person to jump on a totem, and then one person to be chased off a totem, the other person jumps on another totem. Now the killer has to make a choice. Do I go for the totem, or do I go for the survivor? right but then that only solves undying you still then have thrill the hunt and devour still in play but you could do that again um obviously thrill hunt gonna make it that much harder to cleanse those so i don't know i don't know um that's a really interesting question <laughs> do you think you could go a fourth expert and go face the darkness so for every 25 seconds, they uh, scream. Hmm. All right. So we see, we've seen those two builds. We know they're effective. I want to look at their perks, however, and see if any other killers would really benefit. Uh, after working survivor, the next break will wall pallet breaks, real survivors, 32 meters, and makes them scream. I, mean, I guess you could go Scream Dock. Leverage. Each time you hook a survivor, gain one token up to 10. When you hook a survivor, this perk activates for 30 seconds. Reach token, reduce the speed at which survivors heal by 5%. So this would be really good on killers like Legion. Leverage seems to be really good for that. 
Uh, game of foot. Well, and you're chasing obsessions. Perks activates, damaging the generator and breaking walls. Pallets gives you five percent haste status effect. Whenever you hit this fire, the total most time in chase of a basic attack, they become the obsession. So this could be really good for like a furtive chase build, right? Furtive chase. Um, maybe a play with your food could be kind of cute. But just kind of an obsession build in general, right? Hmm. A non-bow would be using this along with, uh, say, the best for last, funny enough. Interesting. Kind of want to try it out with Legion. The only problem is right now we only have them on Prestige 2. We need about a million or so blood points in order to uh, get them to T3. So is there any other builds that I'd like to try? We can't really do a basement build, can we? Can we do a basement build? Because I actually haven't tried it before, but can you put a drone on top of basement if it's in shack? I guess we could test it out throughout our matches. So if we were doing a basement build, let's say we do Corrupt Invention, uh, Agitation, let's say Scourge Hook Monster Shrine, and last but not least, Brutal Strength. Um, I guess we definitely don't need it. We could go just the, the whole Wombo Combo, right? We could go Iron Grasp instead. Iron Grasp, and we could even be cheeky and either go Mad Grit, um, or we could go for a Skirt Choke uh, Monster Shrine. Um, Skirt Choke Monster Shrine. Yeah, let's go for it. If we're doing a basement build, then we'd want to do... Probably all spars start trying a claw trap. No. Uh, as far as that enter drones, active zones are from 5% hindered status effect for three seconds. Probably brown noise generator and vital targeting processor would be the choices there. So let's do a basement build. Let's do a basement build. I'm actually going to skip Maja Shrine and go with more utility like real strength instead. Um, I think we'll do that. And let's actually, instead of a blood point offering, see if we have a blueprint. So we can dictate where the basement spawns. We do have hatches in main, basement in main. We want uh, spawning basement and killer shack. There we go. We want basement and killer shack. We want to put someone down in basement and test if we can throw out a drone on top of basement. Because if we can, that'd be a third way to use their ability. And you technically don't even need like Iron Grass Agi to do it, but it forces survivors to theoretically always inform you when you're going when they're going to basement. So some smaller maps thinking Wrecker's Yard uh, would probably be ideal for this style of play. But let's see if it's possible first. Let's determine that. If so, uh, then we can kind of tweak the build a little bit around that thought process. Because that's the biggest thing about the Skull Merchant. They are good at protecting objectives, things they want to interact with. So as we saw, generators, totems, now we're looking at unhooks. Now normally you can't put a drone next to a unhook, but can you put it on top of basement? That is the question. And if so, they might need to look at that. I spilled some seltzer water. Unfortunate. Neat. You want out? Hi. My big black cat is uh, 
wanting out of the stream room, but Frankie would have to let her out, and I'm not sure what he's up to. All right, so still trying to get a million blood points. Once you get a million blood points, then we'll try out some other builds from the killer uh, on some other killers themselves. So thinking uh, one of the perks on Legion would be a really great example, along with like Thanatophobia just going true slowdown, slowdown builds. Hi, butter. The Shattered Square, okay. Uh, not a big fan of Bargos, to be fair, but it is what it is. Um, hi, friend. Do you have a sprint first, I take it? Yup. The way they are walking just told you. Thank you. Let's drop. Yeah, the tiles here are a bit awkward, but I actually want to force them over back towards Shack. In all actuality, Brutal will help me out here, to say the least. Good job there. Too bad you messed up a lot. Now let's bring him to basement. Test that our theory. There's a boon here as well. Interesting. You get the back hook. And the answer to my question is no. You can in fact not put a drone on top of basement. It is a proximity uh, on the horizontal plane. So that is good to note. All right, so they thought about that. So that really isn't something that synergizes well with the Skull Merchant. So really it is just gens and it is uh, totems. Those are like the two major objectives that you can guard uh, with your drones. Get too close to the drone, I guess. There's the basement unhook. There it goes. So leave that there. I see scratches. I hear footsteps. Let's go for the new survivor. Try to do a little bit of mind games. like they're back there over here on this generator well, let's kick this again not gonna get much value out of our kicks it's 2.5 percent on the flat regression plus 0.3 percent per second thereafter but it's something. We see that another survivor has also grabbed um, a battery or claw trap, rather. Not sure what the idea was there, unless you had life. We're going to fake it out, so a little bit odd. Is that hard? You got it. Hmm. That's an interesting kind of vacuum there, honestly, but we're getting them back into a dead tile. They do have a pallet coming up in main, however. This is a bit of a dead zone. Strange that you're still able to get that. Right, let's kick it. Going up. Going up. And pick you up. Taking it here will not be to your advantage, and I, in fact, do have agitation. 
If I had Mad Grit, this would be so much better. Right, okay. Let's go for the Michaela, who might not realize I'm on them, thanks to the undetectable stat. I'd be wrong, though, as they clearly know I'm on them. However, they're in a bit of a dead zone. There's them back in here. My brutal strength is always good on M1 115s. Never go wrong. We have a dead hard friend. <laughs> nope, just taking the down. <laughs> I mean, if I get multiple health states out of this, the more the merrier. That's fine. I got my free hit. Ooh, a fun Sabo there. I like it. We did that with intent. You, you're in, they're underneath the pallets. I'm a bit concerned about grabbing that, to be completely honest. Real strength coming in clutch as per usual. Get you down. I mean, even if out the gen regression perks that I mentioned earlier, we're still getting a lot of value by placing their drones next to gens. Um, keep in mind, people still don't know really how to work around them yet, but still. That was greedy. That was very greedy for us. Neither Adam. Once again, being a bit greedy here, friends. Let's put you up here. Don't take me away. I'll see land that regress is probably best course of action. They get the unhook here. Yeah! Make you do that. See Jane interacting. No. Oh, you're going down. Yeah! I was thinking that Jane was over here, but apparently not. That is Michaela, who realized that they don't need to worry about the exposed, that they're injured. So Michaela kind of figuring that out, is that once you're injured, the drones kind of mean nothing. That's a life. Like they grab the drone from over there, from the looks of things. Let's go over here. We see them still injured. So let's kick this. out of the way. Mm. Ah! Yeah, 
a bit late on that body block friend. Yep, we'll leave you be. Man, Mad Grant have gotten so much value this match, holy hell. So you're going to the outskirts. Let's hit this. Realizing that there's no pallet there. Yep, dead harding. Makes sense. And let's bring you over here. Could have sworn there was someone right here, but maybe not. Recall that. Let's put that back up. I want to check out main. I do see them over here. None over here. I got the unhook, and everyone's currently on death hook, so I'm in a pretty good position, all things considered. There we see them going over towards Shack. Bring that back up. Here too, that's Michaela. And you know what? We will not commit. Now, I do believe that there is a boon that they're probably using to their advantage. This tile should have one pallet. Use the brick. No need to hesitate. I did get rid of one drone, I do. Ah! Alright, let's bring you to a hook closer to where we need to be. And there it is. Alright, exit gates, where are we at? One there, one there. We see scratch marks heading toward this exit gate, so let's do that. We'll probably get a 2k here. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with these results, especially given that our build was specifically for basement and we didn't really get much value out of that uh, course of action. We turned that uh, 2k into a 3k, so I'll be pretty happy with that result. Putting a drone next to an exocate makes a lot of sense in the grand scheme of things. And you can set it up at any point in time throughout the match. So, I'll take that one as a W. And uh, here a hatch. There's the hatch. But with that being said, GG, well played to these survivors. All right. So it was a boon circle healing, as was expected. A couple uh, unbreakables, which kind of makes sense based on some of the ways they played. Any means necessary. Didn't really make take too much note of that, but say la vie. 
All right, well, on to the next one. I guess let's do, at this point in time, so we tested that out, let's do an adept attempt. I think that would be the next thing we can do. So we are going to, how do you want to play adept? Or should I use just the button that like said adept, you click and it just gives you the adept build. Um, but it is Thwack Leverage Game of Foot. So Thwack Leverage Game of Foot. There's Game of Foot. Leverage is here, and then Thwack. Thwack, okay. So really with this, damaging generators, breaking walls, or pallets gives you haste. Okay. Uh, hooking a survivor, so trying to spread the pain. The next break will wall will make survivors scream. So ideally, break the wall after we hook. We get game of foot, they scream. Um, I'm actually curious on this. Damage jet rays, breaking walls, or pallets. I wonder if the ultrasonic speaker does anything like that. Next break wall or pallet, you break. I don't know. I guess that's a good question. All right, we'll, we'll do the ultrasonic speaker. I do think it's one of the better items just for general use. And let's go for an adept, shall we? I believe all we need to do now is get a 4k, if I'm not mistaken, with the recent changes. All right, let's ready on up. We're at 500, almost 600,000 blood points. Probably won't be able to get to other killers today. And I plan on probably doing, I was going to say doing Survivors tomorrow, but tomorrow's my birthday. And I know that uh, Frankie is interested in bringing me to a restaurant for it. So probably won't end up streaming tomorrow. And tomorrow's Wednesday, so that would mean next time online is Thursday. So we'll probably do some Survivors. Uh, or play with the new survivors on Thursday then. As far as major changes to them, there isn't much outside of the exhaustion perk. I don't know. I, I understand why they changed it at the same time. The perk has value if used well. It's just that I think survivors at lower levels in MMR wouldn't necessarily know how to use it well, and that's always the, the fun part. Looks like we're going to McMillan, making doubly sure that we do, in fact. Okay. So if I had to choose what map I or realm I'd like to go to, I'd say like Suffocation Pit. Probably Cold Tower would be ideal. Cold Tower would be probably the best case scenario. Ironworks of Misery and Grain Storehouse would be big meh. Shelterwoods would be okay. I, I'm okay with Shelterwoods now after the change. It's not my favorite. It's not my least favorite. Uh, so I'd be okay with that. I will say today, we have gotten a lot of variety for maps. So the, excuse me, new map duplication or duplication protection has been working out well. Shelterwoods, perfect. Got the home field advantage. Uh, unfortunately, that's not how that works, but we're gonna toss a drone here. Let's go over to here. We do see scratch marks over there. We see a lot of survivors over there. We see one, we see two. Oh, we're in chase of you now, friend. Now, this is active since we're chasing the obsession. So let's break, we'll get some haste. So a little bit of catch up here. Uh, comparing this with Brutal would always be a good idea that we're able to save that much more time. We 
Yeah, 5% haste is nothing to scoff at. to this hook friend. Take a look at this gen. And let's go over to here. We have one more gen in hand, or one more in hand. Rude. But I will kick this. another drone. We can always recall one if we want to push him off a tile. Oh, I thought you were going to drop down. Smart. They did not. All right, we'll drop Chase and go to the unhook. There's Jill. And you just painted a target on your back. Sorry, friend, but that's what happens. Perfect. Shouldn't mess up your hacking, otherwise that's going to happen. There's Jill as well. Love that. Somehow Jill avoided the drone. Nicely done. He'll activate this drone for me. Perfect. Let's get you up. I really want to hook you away from this, though. Lest we eat the drone and stop protecting that gem. Let's go back to the unhook. Let's not tunnel out the injured survivor. Let's go for the Kate here. <laughs> Wrong side, friend. I will push you to the other side of the pallet. There's Thwack. Reveals your aura. Not that it really matters in the grand scheme of things. Not sure what the thought was there, but it did buy his few precious seconds, I suppose. Uh, uh, That's right here. Uh, One of the four drones have been interrupted and or activated. There's a deliverance. will persist. One person did take away a drone. And now you are dead. Hard. <laughs> Let's drag you a bit further out once again, not wanting to get rid of this drone. Thankfully, the battery is still up on that survivor. Ah! Right, looks like they're on that gen over here. So let's go interrupt. There's the Jill. Don't care about them. There's Kate. Ah! All right. Let's get a hit, though. Let's take the gen. Let's go over the unlock and go for Jill, ideally. Hello there, Jill, me girl. In order to get a decent amount of value out of uh, that one perk, the, the haste, you really need to force something to uh, change who the obsession is on a regular basis. Black will activate, that's worth. I don't exactly want to go for you, but I guess I'll just take the hit and then kick this gen here. I hope they 
they know that I could kill them on many of occasions at this point. Mm, that looks like a life I've ever seen. I reactivated that drone. Nope out there, friend. Mm, I want to put a drone next to this gen. So let us hook you here. Activate the perk. Toss a drone out. Because it's still too close. Oh, I don't have a drone. One, two, three. Oh, because they haven't taken off the claw trap, I guess? Or am I crazy? I guess we have three out and then the claw trap. Okay, boom. Definitely here. Well, we'll get rid of the boom. Not the biggest deal in the world. There's one person over here. All right, friendo. Looks like they're over here on this gen. Let's go interrupt that then. Hello there, Jill and me girl. I'll let you vault. You still have your claw trap on you. It means that I can get you to vault a pallet. Got our challenge done and dusted. Love that. Is there a pallet here, Joe? Let's pick up. Down a drone. And continue after the case. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, forgot about that. Really nicely done, actually. I bet we did get bloodlust from that. Perfect, we see one over there. Um, I will hook right here since we did see a survivor right there. Here's on to what's going on. You're on death hook, so yeah, we'll go after you. We've given you plenty of chances to avoid death, but now I shall not be so kind. You don't make that, I don't think. Ooh, just barely. I'm gonna back with some haste. And Thwack will reveal them too. And just for that value alone, Thwack can be very, very useful. And that there, that extra 5% got us the down. I sworn I may have heard someone, but I guess not. <laughs> oh, it looks like they're over here. All right. Yeah, it's basically in some ways like built-in barbecue and chili at times. Put it here for safekeeping. That was really awkward all around. I was trying to figure out what they were doing and it just did not make much sense. Up you go, friendo. 
And let's put you up over here. Looks like Jill still has a battery on them as well, which is lovely. And they're over here. Crow's going off as well, so we know exactly where they are. Right in front. Hello there, Jill. How goes it? Yeah. <laughs> um, Jill? You okay? Upstairs, sure. I mean, if you drop down, we just drop down with you, unless you have balanced, which it looks like you do, in fact. I guess that's why we haven't seen Jill's uh, exhaustion perk this entire match, pretty much. I wonder if your thought process here is the hope that there aren't any hooks nearby. Too bad there's, wow, one really, really close. You know what, Jill? Since we did hear the, the hatch, we'll give it to you. Hey, GG, my friend, GG. I appreciate you by saying hi. I am Mark, aka Guildspire. I'm an educational streamer here to teach girls how to play killer and survivors how to play against killer. Very happy to have you here. Also, just realized that I, I was doing adept. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, I was supposed to kill them for adept. Oh well. <laughs> Not the biggest deal in the world. We'll always get another 4K another time. You know, you have to live by your own rules, and if I hear the hatch while carrying the last survivor, I'll give them the hatch. Alright, let's grab this challenge. Damage 10 generators. We can definitely do that. The the playstyle of the Skull Merchant very much is a kick gen and run type situation for sure. How have the survivor games been, Shelby? Any better and or worse than what they were prior? Alright. So far, games of the Skull Merchant are pretty status quo. Um, people still definitely learning how to play around them. Some people definitely knowing how to at this level of MMR. Uh, but overall, uh, this is definitely a killer that uh, the build makes the killer. I don't know if you saw it, Shelby, but this build here is a freaking nightmare. Uh, for those of you who have not played against the Skull Merchant with this build, a cautionary tale or more of a tip of what to do in that scenario you will need to coordinate with pretty much your entire team for you to cleanse all the totems around the same time because if you don't yeah the game's pretty much locked up tight it's uh pretty mean and i just realized that as i was talking about it i didn't switch off of it so i guess i'm going to demonstrate what i mean so uh, this is going to be quite nightmarish for these survivors if they do not have a good way of coordinating between them. The entire concept is the Skull Merchant is good at protecting their objectives. But objectives can mean different things to different killers. And in this case, for this build, it is their totems, not so much their gens. Because if you can protect all three gens, or not gens, totems, then you can guarantee yourself five Devour Hope stacks. And that's what we're going to be doing uh, with Devour Hope, Thrill of the Hunt, as well as Undying. Unless these survivors are coordinated enough and are able to take chase for long enough, it's pretty much a GG. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how survivors start to play around this build. Uh, when they recognize what type of build's going on. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, I'm sure it'll be another fun match, at least for me. Can't guarantee the fun of the survivors, but I'm not here for that. I'm here for my own enjoyment. Uh, on top of which, we have time for probably two more matches. And I'll probably call it there at 9 p.m. CST. And then I'll be live again at 7 p.m. CST on Thursday, as tomorrow is my birthday. And looks like Frankie and I will be going out for a steak dinner. Rotten Fields, not a fan, but we'll do what we can. Uh, let's see, we have a totem over here, totem over there by the corrupt, which will be important. You want to put our drone right next to it. And where's the last totem? We see crows come back over here as well. So 
They're definitely here. Ah! Not sure what the thought process was there, friend, but you know, is what it is. Looks like it's up there. I doubt they're gonna be searching. So let's go for the Leon here and then make a rotation after the down. Leon go. Leon just holding W for dear life, and you know what? I'm here for it because he's bringing me over to the totem. Alright, that's fine. What are you doing, friend? You confuse me. Alright. Doesn't look like anyone's been on totems yet. We cannot hook them there. And it looks like... What was that? Yeah, it wasn't a totems. Must have been a skill check miss. You see someone over here... Kick this, toss the uh, drone, get them off that gen for now. And take a look at this gen. And looks like someone is in the drone. That is the thing, Min. She may not realize what's going on there. I guess the corn will kind of hide that beam, won't it? And pops off. Mm, I don't think we get the hit here. But to be fair, pallet wasn't there. Did it break that pallet? Or am I crazy? Looks like that was the drone at the gen. Oh my word. Alright, we did not get our Devo stack either because Fingman took chase nearby. Kind of unfortunate, but not the end of the world. There's a gen popped off. Let's go over to this gen then, because we know Leon's over here. Let's kick it. Leon, my boy. I can see you. Sprint burst? Okay. We learned what his exhaustion perk is. Links it into the LT wall. Okay, he seems a bit smarter now. That's a bit more in the game. Eggman <laughs> did not realize the drone was on them. Interesting. Eggman's in a bit of a pickle. What just? Huh? Wait. I am so confused. Yeah! <laughs> All right, Adam realized. <laughs> And looks like Adam is actually back on the tone, but because of Thrill of the Hunt, we should be fine. Second gen, though. Adam's definitely on that totem.
There's the down. There's the stack. Thrown back up. That is second. This will be third. Yeah, were you able to get that first one before? That would have been a much better position. Now we see exactly where they are. Going over to the meat tree. Okay, then it's down no matter what here. Looks like they got that there. They might not even cleanse it in time, though. Yep, they're on the totem. Mm, probably should have thrown another drone up. Good news is, everyone's exposed right now, anyways. And one more, and we're golden. Thingman still has their battery on them. Oh, it just died, unfortunate. Scratch marks. There's Feng Min. Excellent. It looks like they're here, and they don't know I'm on the way. Oh, but they do. I wonder if they saw me. Ah! It looks like they got rid of that one there. So let's drag her further in, and throw the hunt might just get us there. And even if they cleanse it, it's gonna be undying, nothing else. Yep, they're still on it. Yeah. First again. Oh, there's the pallet. I mean, this is fine. It'll cleanse undying, but nothing else. I know exactly where you are, too. Hi, Fangmin. How goes a girly? It even mattered that you cleansed. Uh, even if that was the Vara, you still would have been exposed off of the drone, too. That's the funny part in all of this. It's such an interesting play style where you really do force them to go after them, but then you get all of this information and in totem protection, too. Uh, it's, a, it's a very fun build, honestly, and very effective at that. But GG, well played to these survivors. They generate side damage only two, only three. We only get the three times. Only three. Oh, I wonder if it was off the record. No, it was Fang Min. Okay, it was off the record. I didn't realize that off the record would save you from an exposed stat? Gain endurance. Prevents the bar from being down, inflicting deep wound instead. Yeah, I guess that is accurate. Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I mean, I guess that is different in me from Metal of Man, for example. Um, where it's not the, expo not the endurance stat. Okay, well, we'll go back to the depth now. 
Another example just how ridiculous that build can be. Because even in instances where I was in chase of someone, carrying someone to a hook, etc., I was still able to then return to that totem in time. I'm gonna guess these two are duo queue based on the XL in their name and being on the same platform. We'll see what we can do. Um, what will this be my last one for the night? I'm thinking it will be. I'm feeling a bit, uh, a bit tired. I need to rest up before I work out tonight. Been doing um 24 mile or eight miles a day. 24 miles a week, and now I'm also doing bicep curls for what it's worth, which I I'm not accustomed to working my upper body. Uh, so my my arms right now are not fans of me. They are like what? have you been doing i'm like uh lifting weights and my arm's like no don't do that that's bad also it's getting a bit stifling in here so though it's gonna gonna be one match let me open up the window I thought <laughs> he's such a strange cat you can't see him because he's behind the green screen i guess i could take it down but he's like in his bed but laying over the side onto the bed itself. So he just like, his stomach just is like a bell curve. It's, it's very odd. Very odd indeed. So upset about this um, metallic nail polish that I'm using. It's really nice, but it's like a one day polish. Um, I did uh, gold uh, the other day. But after two days, it's chipping so much. So, probably redo it tomorrow. Midwich. Midwich is a really interesting map, actually, for uh, for the Skull Merchant because of elevation. You can place the drones underneath instead, and as long as you keep them active, uh, you're in a pretty good spot. This wall. All right, let's do this. This might seem strange, but it's going to capture the area below it as well. All right, let's drop down, do the same thing here. That was strange. Oh, probably because they're upstairs uh, in the next area. That's That would make sense. those active mm, no point in taking it because we don't have a drone down anyways the mm, one of the door broken I don't think you have the distance. Yeah, I know you were there. Sorry, friend, but I am not the mythical moth spire that you seek. Oh, Felix, oh, Felix. How foolish you are. Paired obsession now, love that. I think it being paired with like furtive chase or nemesis is definitely a must though. Wait, was the boon up here? Odd choices are odd. I heard the footsteps. Maybe they're my own. Is there a real possibility? Take this. That's 
some good information. Seeing one cross courtyard for the unhook. Let's go interrupt them. Hello, Fingman, my dear. Yeah, with this perk, you really are incentivized to keep your chases as short as possible. Oh, Jesus. No, that's fine. Men. Let's get a hit on you. Perfect. Yeah, two story, uh. Two story areas like this are really interesting, actually. Looks like they're upstairs. Let's actually break this. Now she can't interact with the drone while she's on the gen. Looks like that's Nancy. Perfect. Gets reset since they pass through. Yeah, honestly, Midwitch seems like a really strong map, so maps of elevation can make this killer really, really strong. Huh. I wonder. It's another issue with design, in my opinion, when killers are only strong on specific maps. But this is a really curious thing, actually. Hi, butter. I really wish that Frankie did not let you in here. Call both of you. The gen was completed. Let's put one right here. The biggest thing is just keeping these active. All right, and then we have one right there. So we just keep it on the opposing floor. It really does mess with their ability to do much of anything. Yep, and they're now trying to figure out where the drones are. Ooh, he didn't drop it. We get the aura reading that we need off of Thwack. <sighs> Frankie... Why did you give me butter right now? Especially with an open can of seltzer. That is a mistake. Little kitties cannot have seltzer. Alright, let's hook you. Not in the drone, mind you. I understand that, but if that's the case, then you need to supervise the boy. Otherwise, yes, <laughs> he caused mischief. Right, let's check the gens that are currently not being protected. So I just realized that, which drone was it? Yeah, I definitely messed up a drone placement. Oh, no, I didn't. I see what's up. I don't think I have enough drones to make it work. So I guess I'll give them that gen. It's not ideal. Oh. 
fine. We'll break. Mm. Let's activate that one. We know we're, they're not on one of those four. Instead, let's just protect this. Let's two tap you. Like I said, I'm kind of fine giving them that gen right now. They grab a drone. I'm not sure which. Let's go for Nancy. I, mean, I wanted to go for you anyway, so thank you for the body block. I wasn't going to tunnel him. Let's toss this here. It's not ideal, but it'll work. As well as go for an exposed Fang Min. Looks like Carlos is now on the gen as well. Felix doesn't fear anything since they're already injured, so why would they? That's smart of them. Get that build up on him again. Perfect. It looks like Carlos is going upstairs by the looks of things. Whatever this way. Perfect. Let's hook you here. That should be far enough out. Let's go for the Nancy now. Is that a flashbang in your hand, friend? It looks like it. Weird obsession, so we'll get our speed boost. And of course, thwack activating. Cute, but unfortunately it doesn't work the way you think it does. Looks like they're interacting with this one. Or maybe not, actually. Alright, let's throw this one right above this gen. So I didn't realize that that one was as far off as it was. Yeah. Ah. Alright, they went this way. Yeah, Midwitch is a really strong map for the Skull Merchant. Ah. Yeah. Get down. Uh. Yo, what's up, Liquid? How you doing today, bud? Doing pretty well. How about yourself? What have you been up to as of late, if anything much? Uh, only thing that I will say Midwitch still has a problem with is book placement and the looks of things. Not the end of the world, but still. Three drones in hand. Put that one back up. And we'll put this one here as soon as they're gone. And grind atomic hearts. How's that been treating you? Hopefully you've been having fun at the very least. All 
All right, now for gens, we have them all on opposing floors. Make it really difficult for these stars to pretty much do anything. Because they need to go downstairs in order to work on the gen upstairs or be injured and simply not care. Like, what do you do in this scenario? The answer really is nothing. I don't think there's anything that you can really just do. Might as well kick this gen, get it regressing. Unfortunately, both these of ours seem to be hiding out just a little bit. Uh, yep, this is the new character, the Skull Merchant. So this is from Chapter 27. Oh, boom. Mm, don't see him there. Sounds like the boom must be upstairs then. Pick this while recharging. Uh, well, this is a boring end to it all. Like, I mean, yes, I do have you locked down, but still. As far as break the drones. Yep, they can hack the drones, and by doing so, they then get a claw trap, which then allows me to track their movements until the battery dies. Yeah. However, they are not really doing much in that regard either. I really have no clue where they are. Could they be in the courtyard, maybe? I feel like we have that entire area locked down. Apparently... This is just annoying at this point. Yep, no one's touching gens. No one's doing much of anything. They have to be walking around to some degree, lest they end up getting crows. Time to start looking in lockers, too. I mean, I'll spend all day, honestly. They're walking around still. Hmm. If I was them, where would I be? Because they could go between lockers. I'm still an advocate that after X amount of time has passed and survivors have done nothing, that they gain, like, either their ores are revealed or their, the game starts EGC, like, something, because this is just ridiculous. <laughs> At this point, just freaking DC. No sign of them. Hmm. They can't be in here. At this point, 
really no clue where they are. Ah, it's about time. After all, can only uh, go through so many lockers. for Midwich there's a ton of lockers too. I was to put down a drone so you can catch them in it. I think I hear it. I think they do too. one there. I'm gonna put one here. Ah, uh, they found it. <laughs> Unfortunate. Honestly, I shouldn't have tracked the drone. I should just would have, uh, should have just found the hatch instead, ignored them. But GG, well played to these survivors. All right. Well, that end game was a bit annoying, but it is what it is. Looks like they had to wake up and yeah, distortion. Any means necessary. I don't think we saw any means all too much, however. Well, either ways, it was a fun match up until the end there. That was a bit a uh, bit much for me. All right, we'll get a stretch and hydrated before we end stream. It is nine o'clock, so I am going to wrap things up, of course. With that being said, guys, as always, if you did enjoy the show and you haven't already, please consider hitting that follow button. Also, check out our Extra Life campaign where we're trying to help your kids at Sanford Children's Hospital here in Fargo, North Dakota. On that note, guys, I'll see y'all Thursday at 7 p.m. CST. Bye-bye!